I'm going over my three biggest tips for getting less robotic AI sounding voice models and then one bonus tip at the end, so stay tuned for that one. The first one is data quality. Data quality is the most important part of voice training in my opinion, as clean data means you're going to have a much better chance at getting a clean output. So garbage in, garbage out. If you throw in audio that is not that good quality, you're going to get a very similar voice model as the voice models at the current moment learn on the data that is inputted into it. So what I mean by good quality data is you want to make sure that it is not slurred, you want to make sure it's not distorted, and you want to remove as much background noise as possible. So any background noise, you want to make sure that you remove it with something like UVR so that the audio samples end up sounding clean like this. No audio in the background. Luckily for us, it's very easy to remove background noise from a lot of different things using tools like UVR, the ultimate vocal remover, where you can remove background music, background noise, and you can even de-reverb audio as well too. My recommendation for data for voice training is you want the voice as isolated as possible. You don't want any other interference inside of the voice as the AI will also learn those features. For example, in one of my voices, there is a little bit of background music still in it, and it's very faint, but it sounds like clanking. For the Vulcan model that I train, you can hear a little bit of clinking in the background, and that's due to it being present in the input audio and it not being 100% clean. But it still sounds pretty good, IMO. And this is due to it still being present inside of the training data. However, unfortunately, it was pretty hard to remove it, and the voice model still sounds decent without removing it. And so that does bring up a point like, what if you cannot remove certain sounds from audio in the data set? My recommendation is if you you have a lot of that speaker's voice, remove the audio from the data set that has those background noises as much as possible, um, and try training on the data that is clean. However, if your data is not 100% clean, if it's like 90% or 95% there, it's still generally okay to train on. And, and for RVC specifically, it does generally fine with just a little bit of background noise in there. Tip number two is start small and prepare to do a lot of trial and error. Training AI models for voice, there are a bunch of different voices out there and it's impossible to formularically say this is going to produce you the best results. There are some general guidelines to follow, but the biggest indicator or the biggest thing for generating a good sounding voice is just by listening to it and doing trial and error. And so what do I mean by start small and trial and error? So when training data sets, you can train with as little as 10 minutes of audio. I know for some of my data sets, I choose to train with an hour, two hours or three hours worth of data. However, for a lot of my models, I first start with 10 minutes of audio. This 10 minutes gives me a window view into how the model might sound if I add more voice samples into it. Um, one thing is that more samples does not always mean a better voice. I like to start small and then run a quick training session on it. The reason I do this is so I don't waste my time trying to train a hour long data set, which is going to take a much longer than 10 minute data set. It's going to take about six times longer to train the 60 minute data set or hour long data set. So, so my recommendation is start small. In the case of RVC, 10 minutes is sufficient. And then after a certain amount of training, you can go ahead and give it a listen. And when you want to give it a listen, that varies as well. But for a 10 minute data set in RVC, my recommendation is, you know, 50, around 50 epochs is just fine for RVC to get a good gist on how a voice sounds. Now you can do more or less depending on what you actually want to do. But for this point, I just really want to iterate that AI training is a lot of trial and error. You will be having to try a lot, which is why I recommend you first start small so that you can see kind of a glimpse on how it might look if you add more data. And then if the small amount of data sounds good, you can you can leave there or you can add more data. And so that's the beauty of training, you know. All right. And my third point is kind of branching off of the second point, but I think this one is very important for training AI models, and that is look at the tensorboard graphs. And so I go over the tensorboard graphs in one of my videos for training better AI voice models and kind of go over some of these tips there as well. But the tensorboard graphs are probably the biggest indicator on where your model is doing well, what epochs, what steps to kind of stop the training at or what steps and what epochs to 
grab the trained model from. And if any of this sounds confusing, I recommend you go check out that video. But this is one thing that is super important is to look at the graphs because it is a great visual indicator on, you know, how your AI model is actually training and how it's doing. So a general trend that is good for AI models is for the training graph to slope down and then kind of level out. You don't want to grab any models when it starts to go back up and you also don't want to stop training too early. You kind of want to grab it when the model has kind of flatlined and I talk more about it in that video. So go check out that video. It's going to be linked down below the description for the tensor board. All right. And lastly is going to be the bonus tip. And this is just my personal recommendation, but don't worry about the perfect model. AI training, there are going to be a lot of different cases, a lot of different voices, a lot of different things. And so, like I said in point two, there's going to be a lot of trial and error. So if you're worrying about getting the perfect model, you're going to be spending like hundreds of hours on trying to get the lowest loss, trying to get the optimum amount of data samples. Most of the RVC applications or the AI voice applications, having a good enough model is generally solid for most people out there. And so if you're spending all that time trying to find the perfect voice, you could be wasting a lot of hours just trying to search for something that might be like 1% better. Looking at the TensorBoard graphs does help out with finding, you know, better models, but I wouldn't be too worried about finding the perfect model. I think it's a better use of my compute and time to get really good models, but not perfect models. Maybe I'll score a couple of perfect models here and there, but you know, it depends on what your definition of perfect is. And so those are my three biggest tips for effective AI voice training, some things to look for and um, just things that I've come across in my experience. If anyone else in the audience has other tips and tricks they want to share with, um, you know, everyone else, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I really appreciate it. And I actually read through most of my comments and, and learn a lot from you guys as well. And that's going to be today's video and I will see you guys later.